Hi, my name is Colton Ryan. Um, I'm currently at Baldwin Wallace, but I'm about to graduate the class of 2017, and I'm about to head to New York to be a part of Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway as the main standby for Evan Hansen. I've only had a couple days of experience so far. Uh, I've just gone to New York for last week for about three days uh, and rehearsed all day every day. And uh, it was daunting. My comfort was definitely here, back in Berea, knowing as I was going along, and I had the great fortune of being able to have all this material thrown at me uh, for my first experience out of school. And, and they said, come back with it all, all done, all memorized, ready to go, um, as much as possible. And coming back here and, and looking at the material again with my teachers, um, grounding myself on this stage in particular, and reminding myself, you got it, you know? You've done this for forever. It's no different. If anything, you're overprepared, because uh, this place is that good. Um, and any of my fears and worries about going back are, are gone. I'm very lucky for that, that I had this opportunity to come back here to not only just feel the love and support from this community, but to be able to be here and, um, and physically feel it. Dear Evan Hansen is probably the most contemporary pop musical there is um, as of right now. And then I came back and sang probably the closest to an opera that music theater has uh, to offer. So, so that, that alone was, was, uh, was a little jarring. Um, it was really humbling, that's for sure. I'm working on two of the greatest pieces I can think of right now, or at least two things that I'm most excited about in my life. Being on this stage in particular, for my, knowing that this would probably be my last time anyway, but now definitively knowing that um, and to walk out at the end and feel an outpouring of love from people I know and from people I don't, um, it's overwhelming in the best possible way because that world is, is very new to me and it's very glamorous already. It's very um, tantalizing. And just remember that that where you came from, you know. I came from pretty much the Midwest as it was. I'm from Kentucky originally. And there's something in the water around here, you know, that keeps people sweet and, and good to their core um, that I'll always try to remember. I'm not wise enough to say how other programs work, what I know about them. I, don't, I will never have a direct experience with them. Um, the only experience I know is the one I've had, and I can speak for, and that's here. And, and I do know that fate was intended for me to find this place and for it, you know, for it to find me. And I think it's a, the same for a lot of people here. Who do, because th there's something different here. I know that much. There's something so special about teaching people not to, not to be looking for the, the applause at the end of the show. That's not what this is about, what we do here. There's something about this place that, that tells you from the day you step foot on this campus that you tell stories. And that's your life. And I never heard that before when I actually came in these doors. I didn't even realize that was what my job was until I came into my first class. And they said, well, why would you do that? You're not telling a story. And ever since, that question goes through my mind all the time. Um, as I read texts all the time, I say, how do I fit in there? And how can I take myself as much out of it as possible? Because um, that's what we're doing. We're just taking great material all the time here. And we're giving it to people. And we're trying to put a spin on it sometimes. We're trying to, we're trying to shake it up. Um, because that's what we're about. He's telling really contemporary, really cool, grounded stories and giving it to a lot of Midwesterners, you know, who probably wouldn't get it otherwise. Um, and the technique here is just, is, you'll, you'll never realize, you'll never know how, how deep it goes, how deep that well is. I will never know, but I've already felt it as I went out there and had five hours of music rehearsal and said, this isn't so bad, you know?
It's, it's because of everything I know from here, every person who's crossed my path here, um, they just instill it in you, that you know exactly what to do when you walk out of here. I met Kyle the first time at my audition day, and it was probably one of my most accurate representations of him. Uh, he was wearing this fedora cap and a t-shirt and a, and a, a vest unbuttoned. He's a really hip, cool dude. Um, <laughs> and he was, he was you know, almost seven foot tall in comparison to me. So, uh, and I, I was waiting outside my audition room. I was freaking out. Um, I, college auditions just weren't going so well as it was. It was one of my last ones. And I felt like this was kismet, like I'd found the place I wanted to be. Um, and, <laughs> and I'm outside the door. And uh, he says to me, uh, so you feel like you're ready? And I said, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he goes, that's cool. Well, just so you know, like, you'll know once you go in there. Like, when I came here, they just told me that I was in. That doesn't happen to everybody, but it might happen. It might. <laughs> and I, and I, all I could think was, uh, I, 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 look, I looked to him back, and I, I said, um, but, but it, it, if they don't tell you that, you, you might still get in, right? He was like, maybe, I don't, probably not, I don't know. I mean, there's other kids around, too. I mean, <laughs> And everyone is just deer in headlights. Um, he, he, was a, he was a sophomore at that time. Uh, and he was just, I mean, the guy, the room would explode when he walked into it. It was obvious. Um, that was my first impression. And uh, I met him then my, my freshman year. He was in my voice studio. Uh, and he sang the first day. And he sang, bring him home. Um, and I just finished playing Jean Valjean in my senior year production of, of Les Mis, the school edition. Uh, so it meant a lot to me. And I, I just thought, God, I want to be him. That guy has it figured out. He was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. He was so goofy. And, <laughs> and he immediately gravitated towards me, and we... And we would just talk for long periods of time. I, I, well, I, I, wanted, I wanted to be like him. And, and he used to tell me all the time, he was, he was like, you will. He, he would say that a lot. And that meant nothing to me at the time. But especially now, more than anything, it means, it means everything to me. So. Three things I look forward to in my profession. Um, the thing that makes me most excited, more than anything, I'm currently, as I've only had a couple of days experience, but I've, but I've started working on a brand new musical. Something that's never been seen by the public really before on Broadway. Um, and I, I've never been a part of something like that. I've never worked on something that was brand new. And especially something that has so much heart in it, too. Um, I, I crave that sensation. I've only been there a couple of days, but that's all, that's all I can think about now. It's just working on new things. Creating something. Being a part of, of the inception of it all. It's one thing to take, take um, art that's already been meaningful and impactful and and interpreting it, and being as true to it as possible, but trying to put yourself in it. Um, but there's something so different about having the opportunity to talk exactly with that, with that composer or with that book writer and say, I don't know, I, I, right now, when I'm that guy, it's, it doesn't feel like that. Or yeah, maybe that's, it, that's totally it. Or just hearing them as they, sitting at the piano and watching them as they go, maybe this is it. And they build something that is out of thin air. The imaginative process blows my mind still. It's why I'm an actor. I take, I take text and I, and I spit it back out. I don't, I don't make it. Um, and to watch, to be able to watch that, uh, it's the most, well, as everyone knows, it's the most beautiful thing in the world when someone can create something so special out of nothing. I look forward to working again. Uh, I look, uh, I'm, I'm, this is all very new to me, um, it is, 
It's very new to me, and, I, and it's a lot of stuff being thrown at me at once, and I can already feel what that finite amount of success feels like. Right now, it feels infinite, because it's, it's just, it's, it's here, it's everything I've ever wanted, and it's happening right now, and it's crazy. And at the same time, all I can think about is like, what's next? And that might be silly, and that might be, um, it, might, it might sound ungracious, but it's not. I love every moment of it. I just, but I feel like that is part of what makes us so different than any other, you know, career-based profession. We don't ever have things that say, all right, you're staple. Here's a staple job, and you're going to stay there forever. So if you don't feel that passion to always say, like, man, can I get the next script? Can I read it? Should we, can we workshop this? Can we work on I, That stuff, that's what really changes, you know, changes the game for, I feel like, a lot of people. You have to have that, that passion and that, that hunger, that, um, that unsatisfied hunger, always. That's what I'm looking forward to, is the next thing. This, this career to me, the word passion is, is art, you know. You have to be passionate about it. Or else you'd be a, you'd be a fool to do it, because <laughs> it's hard. Um, I've seen how hard it is. I don't. I haven't felt it. I'm going to. I know I will. Um, that's a scary thing, just to even think about. And so for me, I mean, it's kind of the way I always I I, I when I watch um, the way Vicky will audition kids. And my first year, I, I watched auditioning. I had no clue. When they would turn around, they'd go, that person's in. I was like, what? Why? The last person I thought was great. And they all are. Because it's, it, to put yourself out there anyway, to be able to put yourself out there and sing in front of a group people you don't know, make art, like that's wonderful and that's so beautiful and exciting anyway. But there's something different about those you know, 20 kids, 10 kids, that I started picking up over the years. I saw that they take their guts and leave it on the floor when they only have 60 seconds to do it. Because it's just another opportunity to show people what they do, to change somebody's life in the room. You can see it in someone's eyes, 100%. And it's, um, that's what, I mean, that, that's so far has been the definition for me. I just want people to keep seeing that in my eyes. Because if, if I lose it, then, then what's the point? My education. My education in the arts all started when um, I was in the fourth grade, and there was an art school in my town that had the best test scores in the county. And my sister had attended because she was a dancer all of her life, and I didn't do anything. I played baseball. And my mom said, you're going. No matter what, you got to have good test, test scores. So I was like, so I was dragged away kicking and screaming for my public school. Um, and I went for singing because, uh, as my mother told me, she was like, you sing all the time. And I told her, no, I don't. No, I don't. There's, no, there's no way. But she said I did. And so I, I went, I sang on top of Old Smokey from the Alvin and Chipmunk sing-along set in Octave. Uh, and, uh, and I got in, um, and I stayed all the way through senior year of high school. Um, when, I was, when I was 11 years old, I was going into the sixth grade, and my father passed away. And... Um, I hadn't done theater at that point. And they were doing a production of Oliver. When I came back, the auditions for Oliver were up, and my mom thought it would be good for me to go. So I did, and I got cast as Charlie Bates, uh, who is a, uh, a two-liner, as I call it. Uh, and he said, it's not rags and rocks, sir. And that was about it. And, um, and it changed my life. It's, it's saved, it saved my life. And it, was, it wasn't about like the show we were putting on. It was about the people. Something about people who want to do the arts when, at that young of an age. Um, they're usually special. It's not an outlier. It's, it's a pattern. And people want to do the arts like that at, at any age, I feel like. They're emphatic. They, just, they want to help. Uh, from that point on, I couldn't stop. I went from show to show to show in my community, at school. Um, and it was only until my senior year when I decided I wanted to do it for real. At that point, I wanted to do opera. I didn't want to, but I thought I didn't have a choice. So, um, <laughs> and that's when I found Baldwin Wallace.
arts education has been my entire life. Oh! 